Hello and welcome. Uh, you've joined a webinar from IPUMS using the IPUMS International Tabulator for Fast Data Exploration. Thank you for joining us. I think we have people from perhaps all over the world, so we appreciate if you're joining us from an odd uh, time of the day. Uh, it's 11 a.m. this morning uh, here in Minnesota um, and it's warming up outside. I'm Laura Cleveland. I'm a research scientist for IPUMS at the University of Minnesota. I'll mention a few logistics. Our webinar today will last approximately one hour. This video will be posted online after the webinar. Uh, we will take questions. We'll have a few pauses for questions and take a few interruptions as we go if clarification is required. You can submit your questions via the Q&A option, which should appear at the bottom of your screen. You may need to hover your mouse over the bottom of your screen for it to pop up. Uh, so the video and the question and answer script um, and some additional answers will be posted together after this webinar. It takes just a little time to pre prepare those materials. So all registered users or all registered participants will receive a follow-up email letting you know when it's ready. Um, so once again, my name is Lara and I'm joined by a few of my research colleagues here from IPUMS and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Kristen Jeffers. Um, you might hear from me during the webinar today um, as I interject to um, answer, or sorry, ask and perhaps answer some of the questions you submit using the Q&A feature. Um, you might also receive a written response from me um, to some of your questions. Um, and Laura might have planned to say this, but I just wanted to say we, we intend to answer as many questions as possible today during the webinar. But um, like Laura said, we will post the entire um, transcript of all questions with answers after the webinar is finished for any questions we don't answer. Hi, this is Derek Burke. I'll also be helping field questions, uh, both verbally and with uh, written responses. So thanks for joining us. Okay, so we'll get started. Uh, we will be using data today. Our examples will be coming from IPUMS International, one of a couple of IPUMS projects that have the Analyze Data Online feature. Uh, IPUMS International is primarily a census microdata project, uh, but we have recently gotten grants and begun adding surveys, uh, labor force and household surveys. So this screenshot is a sneak peek of what will be released uh, in just a few weeks. Uh, we're adding a couple more new countries and piloting some surveys from Spain and Italy. Um, more than 1 billion person records, these are microdata files. Um, and this tabulator allows you to access uh, the full microdata collection um, via online analysis system. The system that's attached to IPMS is called SDA, which was developed at the University of California, Berkeley. It's a web-based analysis system. So uh, analysis is running on university of Minnesota servers, so all of that power is available, which makes the data crunching quite speedy. It's also fast because we prepare column stored data files. That's what's required um, to run behind this tabulation system, um, which also makes the calculations uh, very quick. Um, the University of California, Berkeley maintained this system until the end of 2014, but it lives on at the Institute for Scientific Analysis. Um, so that said, it's quite powerful. It was developed by statisticians, computer, uh, computer <laughs> experts and survey methodologists. Um, so it has a, a ton of statistical capabilities and we will only scratch the surface of what's possible today but I'll show you where to find instructions to use even more features. Um, so you can see it's been around for a while. So I just want to add a little disclaimer that the interface we're gonna be looking at today is a little bit outdated looking, um, but don't let that intimidate you um, or 
let it suggest that um, it isn't quite complex system. Uh, so we'll just explore a few of those features. Uh, the plan for today is to get familiar with that interface that you just saw. Uh, we'll make some tables, do some frequencies. Uh, we should get to comparing means and along the way, we'll do just a little bit of data recoding um, and look at some of your viewing options so that you get a flavor for what's possible. Um, and we're gonna orient this uh, exploration around looking at educational attainment differences uh, among males and females using the example of Botswana. So that said, I think we will jump right to the website and get started. Uh, here's our IPRMS International website. We are one of nine IPRMS projects at the University of Minnesota. Others can be found at IPRMS.org and they include health, time use, other surveys, and US census and survey projects. Analyze data online is right here, and we're gonna be spending most of our time today in that area. I'll mention that in order to access the international microdata, even with the online tabulator, a person has to be registered for access. I'm not gonna register right now so that you can see when that registration prompt pops up when we try to access the data, um, but all our activity will be done here. One tip, we'll remind you this at the end, is uh, it's always good to keep an IPAMS tab or uh, window open because the metadata within the SDA system is fairly limited. So if you wanna get more detail about a variable or re-examine values or documentation, it's good to be able to jump back into the IPAMS website. So I'm gonna open Analyze Data Online in a new tab. It's very similar to the old one, except here we say online data analysis system. A couple things to point out here is that there is an instructions page that um, points out a few of the things you should most look out for. There's a video tutorial available on using the system um, and those can be quite helpful. This page is organized uh, in three, four sections. Uh, at the top, we have to prepare the, file, the files that sit behind the tabulator. So at the top, we have the individual files where you analyze just one sample at a time. We'll come back up here in a minute and look at Botswana 2011, but we'll just have the one year, census sample year from Botswana if we use data sets at the top. If you scroll down past all the individual data sets, we've also prepared pooled files of multiple years from single countries. So here you wouldn't be doing cross-country analysis, but you'd have a pooled file from a country. We'll come back later and do the full set of years from Botswana. And then at the bottom, we have entire continental regions all pooled together. So you could compare across a couple countries. The tabulator is going to turn the full data set, so it takes much is much quicker than a stats package, but takes a little bit longer um, to analyze those, even if you're just pulling a few countries. And then at the very bottom, uh, there are some historical, mostly full count data sets available in EPOMS, and you can access those individually at the bottom of this page to select data sets. So before we jump in and analyze, I was hoping to just find out if anybody has tried playing around with these IPOMS data sets. So if you would, I'm gonna launch a poll here that asks whether you've used the IPOMS online tabulator. So yes, you've actually gotten some results. Uh, you kind of played around with it just a little, or yes, you've actually learned some things by using it. So I'll give you just a few seconds to answer those questions. Sorry, maybe um, while we're waiting for yeah. the poll results, sure. results we'll um, jump in with a question. Um, one of our participants asked if the IPMS International registration is required if you've already registered for other IPMS projects. Uh, 
Yes, I think it will be quite easy because I think much of your information will already be populated. Um, but you will have to write a research statement specifically for IPIMS International. Um, so you would have to go back and register for IPIMS International Access. So the tabulator itself does not require a separate registration? No, if you've IPIMS already registered for IPIMS International, that is the same registration that's queried when you try to use the tabulator. Okay, so it looks like we have maybe about three quarters of you answering and it looks like more than half of the people uh, have not used the tabulator before. A few of you with some success. Uh, here, I'll share the results. <laughs> a few with some success, some just a little and quite a few of you have not used it before. So welcome to all of you. I hope those of you who have used it, I'll learn a few new tips. Um, and those of you who haven't, I hope we give you enough information to become familiar with the tabulator. I'm going to put this poll away. And we'll go take a look at Botswana 2011. And here's where it's asking me to log in. So when you when it comes down to actually getting in and using the data, will ask you to register. Oh, if I didn't mistype my password there. Okay, so here we are. So now the interface tells me which data set I'm in up here at the top. Hopefully you can see my cursor. Um, by default, I've landed on a page that is was capable of doing frequencies and tables. Um, but let's get familiar with this interface because it looks a little daunting. You have analysis options up here at the top. We're on this frequencies or cross tabs section. You can compare means, produce correlation matrices, do multiple regression, logit probe it. Probe it. Um, we are just going to scratch the surface on this end, but I would like to point out that the instructions to this system are excellent. And if you jump into those, um, it describes everything from how to populate the fields in the table to how um, confidence intervals and standard errors are calculated. So there's quite a lot of excellent information there in the, um, in the instructions. Same thing with these other sections. If you jump in, it will jump you to the section that describes that type of analysis. Um, it, this system also has the capability of recoding variables and computing new variables. Again, if you jump into instructions, you can see recoding rules, general instructions. If you're a reader, not a webinar follower, <laughs> um, you now know that you can go into these instructions and read probably everything you need to know to do what I'm doing and everything else. Um, so there's a lot of excellent information and resources in the system. Um, the code book, as I mentioned, there is not a lot of metadata. We can take a look at these are the variables as they're organized by household and person. You can see alphabetical lists. If you jump into a variable, it will show you codes, values and labels, percent, the end, the name of the variable. Um, so you can get a little bit of information, but you don't have detailed descriptions of these things if you're jumping into the code book. Okay, but now I said I wanted to look, take a look at education. Um, so let's just simply figure out how to get a variable in here and ask for a frequency on educational attainment. On the left side are the variables that you can use explore to populate. If you're familiar with the IBM's data sets and variables, you can simply type the name of the variable in here. But if you spell it wrong, it's not going to work. So for this first example, we'll go down and find a variable. Looking for a person variable on education, what I really want is educational attainment. And I'm fine with the general code or the general coding version. So edutain then appears up here in this selected field. And you can send it to the row, column, 
control group or filter from here. So if I click row, editing goes in the row. And I'm just gonna run a frequency. Whatever I put in the row will give me a frequency. Um, but let's take a look at the defaults. Table options. I'm gonna get a percent for column by default. I'm gonna get a weighted number of cases because this system has automatically populated the weight with the person weight. Uh, we recommend that if you're not sure about your sample structure. Many of the samples in IPMS International are flat systematic samples where there's a uniform weight, often weight of 10, but sometimes 20 or whatever. Um, for those flat samples, you wouldn't necessarily need the weight. Um, for more complex samples, uh, you might want to make sure that it's on. Um, color coding won't apply to frequencies, but we'll see that when the tables pop up. I could give my table a name, so I'll say But as you'll see as we go along, I'm not going to keep titling my tables because the system gives you quite a bit of information to identify what you're on. So if I run the table, this is the title I entered. But as you can see, it already tells me that it's Botswana 2011. It shows me which variables I used, what the range is, and then I see my frequency distribution here. It's given me the percent and the weighted n out to one decimal point. I don't think I need that for my ends, so I might turn off that decimal point and see how many valid cases and total cases there were. So I'm noticing here for educational attainment that I have some people who aren't in the universe, and I have some unknown values, and then I have my four primary main categories of educational attainment. Um, so I'm interested in looking at gender, and there's probably an age component to what I want to explore in education. Uh, so I'm going to go back. For now, I'm going to let my tables start piling up over here in the tabs, but eventually I might delete those. Um, it gets to be quite a few tabs, because each one produces it a new one. So for data exploration, I might want to just take a look at frequencies. So I could go find sex and age in the demographic section here. Sex, I can add it to the row if I want to just get frequencies. I can also just type. So now I'm gonna get three frequency tables. Take a look at my results. Here's educational attainment again. If I scroll down, I'm seeing male and female. No unusual values there, so check that out. And then I see age, and I'm just, it's, you know, it's not quite as compact as a statistical package output. Um, so exploring age online, maybe not so good if I have percent and counts. Um, but I do notice here at the bottom that I do have some missing values for age. And that might be important for me to know if I want to filter to certain age groups or if I want to determine how I want to deal with missing values. And for today, I'm going to exclude those when I'm running my tables. Um, so I will get rid of a few of these tables. I see my phone book and help pages are still there. And come back to this page and actually run a cross tab. <laughs> Surprising it takes us this long to get there. But you can see you can run all your exploratory frequencies, vet your data, figure out what the values are notice where your missing values are really quickly with this system. Um, so now I'm going to run where it keeps it for me so I can reselect it and sex. Um, and just let it go and see what our table looks like. And so now I have males and females educational attainment. Here's my not in universe. You can see females are getting, are moving up in educational attainment in 2011. Um, and there's nearly equal between males and females for university completed. 
Um, the significance is indicated here on the table. Um, table cells are color coded to aid in detecting patterns, but you're not, you can turn off that color coding if you find it to be distracting. Uh, cells with more cases than expected become redder. Cases with fewer cells than expected become bluer, and the shading of the cells uh, depends on the magnitude of the Z statistics. So the lightest shading are Z values between zero and one. Medium is uh, between one and two, and the darkest are greater than two. And again, that can be turned off if it's distracting. I find it helpful. Some of my colleagues absolutely can't stand it. Um, depends what you're looking at the tables to find out. Um, so there's no good way. This is another of the um, things we wish would be better about SDA. There's no good way to get this data out of here. I can't right click and export this table. Um, so it really has to be a copy and paste. So if I'm looking really just for the percents here, I could run this table again and turn off that weighted N. Um, I could get rid of the color coding run the table again. And now this table is a little bit cleaner, a little bit simpler, but in order to get it out of here, I have to, I'm control C to copy. Um, I kept Excel open here on my screen and I can paste it. Nope, that didn't work. It worked for me the other day. Let's try it again. Maybe I didn't grab the whole table. Or it might be that I was in Firefox and Chrome doesn't work the same way. Oh, webinar glitch. <laughs> I have had success definitely in Firefox with copying those tables. Um, so I'm sorry about that. We'll add something to the Q&A if I can give you more tips for other browsers uh, after the webinar. Okay. So if, we, if you're producing charts, you could probably screenshot the charts and graphs. Um, we'll look at those in a few minutes. Um, the color charts are kind of garish, um, but there is a black and white chart option. Um, down here, you can pick grayscale instead of the colors. So potentially, if you were looking to pull out a bar chart or something, you could copy that and use it. Um, so I think uh, there's one more thing I wanted to explore here, which is that in our table, we have this NIU, and we probably should figure out um, who's in there and whether we want to use that. We're looking at educational completion. I'm really interested in, you know, maybe I want to take this on and look at how education influences possibility of being employed or some other thing. So I really today want to look at people who are at risk of having completed their education. I'm guessing that most of these people in the NIU are people who are too young to have started their education. Um, but if I really want to find that out, I can't do it within SDA. I have to go over here to IPMS. I'll go to select data. I'm going to look at all of Botswana. So that's the country we're looking at. Um, and then I'll go to educational attainment. So here are my frequencies, but in these variable descriptions, we have this information about the universe. And if I look here, I see in 2011, zero and one year olds are not in the universe. Everyone else was asked the question, except institutionalized non-residents. So there are some people in institutions who also were not asked the question about education. Um, so I think I'd really like to take a look at what's going on with age and education. Um, well, I actually, age is unwieldy, so I want to put age in the row. I'll put edu educational attainment across the top. And in this case, I might want row percentages. I'll 
put my ends back on and run the table. And now, sure enough, my zero and one year olds are not in the universe. My younger people are in less than primary and at about age 11, 12, I'm at risk of having completed primary. Um, and I'm just gonna scroll down and take a look here. Something else that I noticed, and if my color coding was on, it would be even more obvious, is that at these young ages, people who have recently been completing their education are doing that at pretty high rates and that falls off as you get older. As you might expect, worldwide, um, educational attainment has been increasing. Um, and then you see a few of those institutional people are showing up here in the NIU too at the higher ages. Um, so I'm gonna say it's okay to go ahead and exclude those NIU cases. I'm gonna leave the unknowns alone. Um, and I really, from now on, I'm gonna look at people who are age 20 and above when I run these tables. Um, so I'm gonna do that one more time and then we'll pause for questions if some of them are accumulating. Um, so I'm gonna put editing back here. Here. Now there are a couple ways to filter. So now I wanna filter by age for sure. Um, I'm gonna say 20 and above so I can do 20 to, I could do to the maximum number, but remember I have those 999s for age, so I don't wanna do that. Age ended at 94, I could put that as the top. The system would calculate it if I said, oh, 20 to 99 will capture everyone. Um, either of those will work. I usually like to be precise, so I'm gonna to go to the top of the age range. Um, and then I, I'm okay today with throwing out those unknown values of editing, so I can also filter that here and say, I just want the substantive values of editing. Okay, but I don't even have to type it in again. I can also just filter in any of these fields. So I can say, I want those substantive categories of editing right here in my row value. Um, as I said, I, I'm a fan of the color coding, so I'm going to turn that back on. Um, I don't think we really need this, and I will forget to update it every time I run a different table. Um, and then I didn't like those ends having decimal points on them, so I'm going to change that and run the table. So now I'm really looking at people, you know, maybe not quite all of them are at risk of having completed university, but I'm looking at people who have completed, oh, I've left my row, row percentages on. And that is a common thing that happens to me all the time. Why are my percentages looking odd? If I want column percentages, now I can see who's at less than primary. Among these people who have are at risk of at least having completed secondary education in most of the older working and older population. Um, so I think this is a little more the picture that I was looking to find. Um, and this is just for Botswana 2011. And I really wanna look at how this has evolved over time. So after questions, we'll go back and collect that next Botswana pooled sample. But if there are a few we should answer now, take those. Yeah, we had uh, uh, one participant who asked whether the tabulator can be used for undergraduate class instruction. Um, and yeah. so. Okay, that's a great question. Um, I think it would be great for undergraduate class instruction. Um, and yes, that can happen. And I think I will go to IPMS here and also show something since the question gives me the opportunity to do that, which is when you log in, um, I should be logged in already. If you are an instructor of a class, you can create a classroom account. And if I fill this out with information about my class, uh, we will approve that class and you will get a classroom code that your students can use to register they don't have to use that code, but if they do, um, two things will happen. One, they'll get approved more quickly because we know they're coming from your institution 
and are affiliated with your class. So we know we don't have to scrutinize them quite as closely. Um, and secondly, they will be in a classroom. There are some features to this classroom account that you can read about online um, where you can also push them data extracts. Now, if you're wanting to use the tabulator, you might not want to mess with those um, actual microdata files that you do in the statistical package. But if that's something you want to get to by the end of your class, um, you can make uh, data, custom data files that can be used by your, uh, by your students. So thanks for that opportunity to talk about that. And uh, I guess the second part of that question was clarifying that IPMS International is not just for graduate student researchers and faculty researchers that in addition to classroom accounts, undergraduates can apply for yes. an account uh, in the same way that a grad student or a faculty would apply. Yes, undergraduates can apply for an account. Um, we, we, our agreements with countries, uh, we've agreed that we will screen applicants to try to make sure that they are from bona fide educational policy um, or research organizations and that they're not using the data, for example, for commercial real estate venture purposes or something like that. Um, so if, if they're coming from an institution and they're a student and they have a credible research agenda, uh, they, they will also be approved. Uh, another question that we had uh, was whether there, there's any subnational data available uh, to, for use in the tabulator. Yes, we're not actually going to work with that today, but in Botswana the, at the household level here, there are geography variables. I could um, use one of my parameters, one of the geographic variables, probably in the row, and then I could see how rates or something else differed by geographic area. Um, yep, and they could be used in regression or other ways. Uh, might be a good, since we're talking about a household variable, it might be good to mention now that all data that are populated behind the tabulator for IPMS, um, all those files we've constructed are at the person level. So these are data that are gathered at the household level, recorded on the household level, but we have, they are written onto all the person records and that's what lies behind this tabulator. If you really wanted to do a household level analysis where you just have one record per household, it is not sufficient to you just simply use the household weight. You have to select down to one case. And so you would do that by filtering to per num would be the variable value one so that you just be taking the first, the information from one record within the household. Maybe one more question. Uh, so we had another question about merging, uh, actually a few questions about merging data from the tabulator with other data from outside of it, from specifically with GIS uh, location data. Um, I'm not sure if that, uh, how that would be possible. I think if I understand where this might be going, um, it would be possible to use the tabulator to aggregate any number of things at the geographic level. Um, assuming I can get you good information about copying that data out into Excel or into a database, um, you could then use that in GIS files or something like that. So I know we did a webinar recently on using the geography variables and we were really talking about crunching the data in a statistical package, but you could do similar calculations in the tabulator and copy that out with the geographic um, information there and use it that way. I'm not sure if that's what the person was asking though. We, you can't merge data into the back end of this tabulation system. So if that's the question, then no, you'd really want to use the microdata files and do what you need to in the tools that you're familiar with. Maybe just one um, quick logistical question. Um, we, for people who joined late, could you just show how to get into the SDA system one more time? Yeah, I will do that. Oops. 
suits my purposes anyway, because we're going to move on to uh, the multi-year Botswana file. So all our work today is in this Analyze Data Online section of the website. Um, I mentioned earlier that I like to open it in a new tab so I can still go back to IFMS for reference on the variables. Data are organized by single year data file at the top, multi-year by country in the middle, and continent wide at the bottom. So I'm gonna take Botswana 81 to 2011. Now I have a pooled multi-year data set from Botswana. Okay, so I'm going to use the setup I had at the end of the single year file and use edutain the substantive categories. I'm going to put sex in the column and now I need to use one of these parameters for the year. Uh, and I'm going to keep my age filtering here. Column percent is fine. I'll leave the weighted N and run the table. So now I have uh, statistics by year. So I have the same table in 81. We see just a handful of secondary and university completed, both males and females. It's in 1991, those rates go up just a bit. Males ahead of females there. By 2001, we're getting into double digits of secondary percentage wise. And then in 2011, we have 20% secondary and seven and close to 8% university completed. Uh, so that's one view. I could add bar charts to this. Uh, if I wanted a different view, I could swap year and age up here. I'm sorry. Sucks. Um, leaving the age filter on. I'll just show you what the stack bar charts look like here. Moving on the table. So now I've got uh, statistics for males by year. You can see less than primary completed going down because those people are getting education. Um, trend is upward in all other areas. And here we can see that visually, um, university at the top, less than primary at the bottom. And then here's the rate for females with similar looking bar charts. So you can see those colors. I'm not sure they're the kind of thing you'd want to copy and paste into a, into a paper or anything, um, but they do provide good visuals for exploring the data. All right. So now I want to explore that, um, that phenomenon we saw where um, this trend is continuing on and the younger people are really um, coming out even more highly educated. Um, so this may not, this may be slightly artificial excuse to do some recoding, um, but, uh, but we'll use it. Um, so in create variables here, we can recode variables. Um, there are some really great instructions here. Uh, actually, even going to go back to our analysis page and look at the recoding variables. So I'll do that. Bunch of recode. So in recode, I'm going to make um, some grouped categorical variables. So I'm going to group younger men, younger women and then have another group for older men and another for older women. Um, and you can use up to six variables here to make a reclassification. I could imagine sort of picking an occupational group and looking at how different industries compare uh, or something like that. But for today, we're gonna do something very simple. I'm gonna call this uh, really exciting name age sex. And then I'm going to assign just values one, four, younger men. I'm going to say tw ages 20 
94, two, whoops, two, four, we're going to add the sex, here is value one, and value two. Maybe, oh no, I'm going to 20 to 40 here. No, I think I'm just going to do 41 to 65 and cover the working age population here. Okay. Now, if I recode like this, I'm also, and I don't add any other values from age, I am also by default filtering my data to 20 to 65 year olds. And the system isn't really gonna warn me about that. So I have to know if I don't cover every value of my input variable, I've excluded it from what I'm doing here. Um, but if I think this is okay, um, I can add a label here, um, which is good practice, but I'm just going to start recoding. Oh, I need this. And then I will use the replace option. Yes. I was not using this computer yesterday, so I don't know why <laughs> there's already a variable there. We might have to go look at our variables. Okay, so here it tells me whether I've succeeded, what that distribution looks like, um, and what that variable looks like. And I can come back to that and create variables. I can look at my variable um, here as well. I can also populate my row or column with that info. Okay, so now, I have this variable. I'm going to go back to frequencies and cross tabs. And I'm going to look at edit tape again. And I'm going to put the age sex grouped categorical variable here. Near person weight is fine and on the table. And now I can see men and women together on this table. Not super easy to look at. Um, but I, I don't know. I needed, but I can see uh, that we're not getting a lot of traction with the younger set in the early years. But by the time we're down here to 2011, um, we're getting some higher rates of educational completion. Um, again, maybe not the most robust exercise, just an excuse to show the recoding function. Um, but there's another way to look at um, another view of this that I really love, which is the compare means. Um, so as we get closer to the end of the webinar, I really want to get to the compare means function. Um, again, still looking at educational attainment and as a way to explore what's going on with these younger populations. Um, so I'll go back and show you a different way of recoding. I'm going to turn educational attainment into a binary variable for whether someone's completed secondary education or not. So if I look at recoding here, I have some information in any of these fields. When you specify the variable, if you see down here toward the bottom left age where my cursor is, if you use R colon, you can collapse categories by specifying ranges delimited by a semicolon. And it will automatically assign values of the element number. So this 18 to 30 would come out as a one um, but the system is really good at showing you both the one and the age range of the original or the range of the original variable that you assign to one. Um, you can also assign your own new values here. 
recode and just say one equals, you want five to equal the next range. So the instructions here are excellent. What I wanna do um, for this demo is, I'm lost in here, I'll go back to recode. Use this create a dummy variable to make a dichotomous variable. So there I'm gonna use my variable name and a D colon. And then whatever numbers I put in there uh, will be assigned a one and all other values will be assigned a zero. I can even add a label there if I want to. So I'm gonna come back here and when I put editain, no, yeah. It doesn't remember because now I'm in means, so I'm in a new field. And I'm gonna make it dichotomous and I'm gonna assign secondary completion and university completion to value one. I could even say, in quotation marks and then close parentheses. So now I've made a dichotomous variable here. I'm gonna put sex in the row, year in the column. And I have that age filter that I still want to apply. Um, and then this is going to throw those NIUs and unknowns into the zero category. So this time I do have to, can I spell? Um, I do have to limit it with the filter if I want to include only those substantive values of editing. And now I'm going to get a mean for my dependent variable. So basically a percentage of people having completed secondary education. Um, so here I can see that um, males have led females until the most recent census year in completing secondary or higher education in the population age 20 and over. So that's the whole population. Now I can explore all kinds of age ranges here. And then we have bar charts for male and female. Um, if I want to see males and females side by side, I can switch these again. And then my bar charts will show, they should. Same table, different orientation, but then my bar charts are showing me by year, the difference in male and female. Um, and now in this case, if I wanna look at those people who have recently completed their education, I can just go up here and play around. I don't know if this is sound statistical practice. I'm really doing some mining here. Uh, run the table again and say, whoa, those younger people are getting a lot more education. We're not at 28% here, we're at 37 and 42. And females in Botswana are kind of following a global trend in really getting more education um, among the recent graduates. Um, so that's another way. I love the comparison of means feature if you really are just looking at, you know, if, you, if your analysis is amenable to a dichotomous variable, or if you just want to look around at some things, it's a nice way to kind of get everything consolidated in one view. Um, so those are the functions that we were going to cover for today. Just get you a sample of recoding, a sample of how you can play around with the tables and exposure to compare means. Um, before we take a few more questions, I just to explore the speed of this thing. I want to set something running while we answer your questions and we'll see if it's finished when we get back. I'm going to go down here and take all of Asia. This is uh, 211 million cases in this um, data set behind the scenes. I'll just run this table by sex. Um, and now here I need to do sample. If I were trying to compare maybe like two recent uh, censuses from different countries in Asia, 
I could use this data set and then I could specify just those couple samples I wanted to see and I wouldn't have to look through everything from Asia, which is what we're going to see uh, once this runs. I'm going to take my same age limitation and we'll set this going and take some questions while we're waiting to see how long it takes. Yeah, one question that we had was right on that, that topic that you just covered in terms of uh, what are the possibilities for using two or more countries in the tabulator? And I think you just partially answered that question. Partially answered it. And if you're looking at two countries in Asia, for example, you're going to be waiting for however long we're waiting today for this table to pop up. So it's not quite as convenient. Um, it's a little frustrating, uh, but it's still I mean, it is, it is possible to do it and you can name those samples. So in that case, you want to go over to IPMS International, uh, select data, um, let's see, we want, I think we want technical household variables. And you'll want to get your sample ID from this sample variable. And you'll have to specify this long thing for each of the samples uh, in the parentheses behind that sample filter. Um, but it would, if I put in this, you know, these two Belarus and two of the Bangladesh in that sample filter, it would just show me those four files when it was done. And our tables are up. So we have uh, this educational attainment table. Bangladesh is, happens to be the first country listed in the Asia collection. But I have Armenia, Cambodia, China, Palestine. Scroll all the way to the bottom. You can see how many tables are here. Sorry if I'm making your head spin. Um, and then if we go entirely to the bottom, oh, we have 117 valid cases because we filtered out a lot of ages and it crunched through 211 million bus records to produce these tables. Uh, and just on that question of multiple samples, uh, are, would you be limited to the groupings in terms of all of Asia, all of Europe uh, mm -hmm. in your comparisons? Yes, unfortunately you are. Um, it would, we can't know every custom pairs and groups of, uh, of samples that people might want to analyze and to put um, more than 1 billion records in the data file. I, I mean, I don't know. We haven't tried to see if it would break the system. Ultimately, our continental files are probably going to get quite large um, if we keep adding data. Uh, but that is not, that's something you'll have to do in your stats package or make a customized extract with just the samples that you want to use. Uh, we also had a couple of questions of clarification about, uh, again, about access to creating an account with IPMS International. Okay. Uh, so one question asked whether uh, an institutional email or a university email address is required um, to uh -huh. create an account uh, because some there's some students who are in institutions that don't have institutional emails, right. um, even if they are a student. Yeah, um, it, it's helpful. If you have one um, and you're willing to use it, I encourage you to use it, but some people um, don't have those. Um, that is not a barrier to getting approved, um, but it could slow things down or it may prompt a question or an initial denial and a, and a request for additional information. Um, we're, we're very conscientious and aware of our agreements with countries, um, and we have had some um, attempts by who knows who to register. Not that they're necessarily malicious, but we have agreed that we will try to vet people. So you may be asked to provide an instructor name and institution or something from your organization that would verify that you're, you are who you say you are. Um, but it shouldn't be a barrier to using it. Um, if you have a, an, a scholarly or policy research purpose, um, you should be able to get access and we can work with you to, to get what's needed to make that happen. And relatedly, uh, so that was about 
if you if you are affiliated with an institution but don't have uh, an email address from that institution, um, a further question is about individuals who might not be affiliated uh, with any educational institution but who want to use the tabulator or the data for kind of personal education and study, um, whether that's possible, whether that can be negotiated uh, during the registration process or. Yeah, I, I think it's worth an inquiry. If you're really, you know, look, looking to do some research, it, it's worth asking. Um, yeah, we're, we're trying to be true to our agreements, um, but we're also willing to work with people who have research interests. I know, you know, sometimes retired academics fall in this category um, or people who are trained but are, you know, maybe they're writing a book, but it's not really a scholarly book. They're just trying to get a little piece of background, something like that. Um, definitely send an inquiry and we'll work with you to see if we can help. Uh, and then one further question that we had, which was related to uh, the when you discussed exporting, getting data out of the tabulator. Um, so like Lara said, we're going to provide further instructions on that and the materials that will be distributed after the webinar. Um, but a specific question was about the options for exporting <coughs> graphs. Um, so the graphs, uh, the, the graphs that we saw, the charts, um, in the tabulator, what are the options that we have for exporting those? Yeah, unfortunately, um, that is one of the main limitations of the SDA system. Um, it's not straightforward to export tables or graphs. Um, so it would be a similar, um, a similar solution where you would either have to possibly do a screen grab or screenshot. Um, I'm not actually positive if you can Maybe, I know in some browsers it's possible to copy an image right out of your browser window and save it. Um, I'm not entirely sure um, if that is possible. I think it probably depends on your browser. And again, we can provide more information about that um, with the, the video and the transcript um, of today's webinar. Uh, another option that I know I've used that might be browser specific uh, is that uh, in some cases you can print all the results to a PDF file, which is not, might not be useful depending on your situation, but it can be a nice way to, to save those results um, and uh, share them with other people. Um, it looks like we have a few minutes left, so maybe just one more question, um, which is, um, about the, um, well, I think it's worth, this is a more complicated question, so I'm not sure how um, sufficiently we'll answer, but I think it's worth asking just to point out the fact that you can do more complicated statistical analysis with the tabulator. So we have a question here about um, doing regression, and if you're pooling data across countries, um, how do you take into account the various country weights, um, which is, um, a difficult question, but I think worth um, gives us an opportunity to point out some of the other features of the tabulator. Well, that is a good question. Um, you can you can compute almost anything um, here, and person weight will have the person weights for. Excuse me, I have a cold, and so Kristen might have to take this up if I can't get through it, but. Um, these have the person weights by country, but if you're trying to normalize country size or something like that, <clears throat> I think you could do a multiplier on the person weight, or you could compute your own weight in some fashion with the compute new variable. There really are excellent instructions here about how to compute things and how to use the regression functions. So I. I think that not having a live demonstration is not going to be too much of a hindrance. Um, we might consider doing that webinar eventually. Um, we don't have one prepared right now, but the documentation is really excellent. So I think between computing um, and looking through the regression instructions, uh, you would be able to get some tips on how you might go about doing that. Okay, well, we're at noon Minnesota time. Um, 
We're really thrilled that you joined us today. Uh, I hope you got some something new um, that you can use from this webinar and um, takes us a little while to process the video and get the Q&A prepared. Um, but anybody who is registered today will get an email when those things are ready online. Uh, and if you come up with a question later, um, we have excellent user support. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. Um, I won't cover my tips. I think we covered them all online. But ipums at umn.edu. We have great colleagues who answer people's questions or direct you to people who can help you get those answered. Um, so thanks everyone. We'll sign off now.